Good evening, everyone. God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Wednesday Impartation. This is Pastor Robert Porter from New Life Christian Center Ministries. Welcome you here with me this evening. Let's pray and get right into what God has. Father, we thank you for this word and we bless you for it. Father, I yield my will to yours. Have your way. Reveal truth, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father, help our heart to gain understanding and wisdom, Lord God, from you. Thank you, Father, for this time and this hour, Father. Let this word not rest on deaf ears, but only bring life and light to those who hear it. And Father, we bless you for everything you have done so far. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. 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 Y'all may be seated. I'm going to start off <clears throat> with y'all this evening just sharing my heart with you, you see? And, um, you know, I've been teaching on this fear of authority. I've been teaching on certain things on the spirit that, I, that I've also taught on certain things concerning the anointing of God. And... Several different things, but basically, I'm teaching what God has stamped this church to do. We are to create leaders by imparting the life of Christ to you. That's what our vision and our mission statement is. So, every now and then, I go back, and here lately, I've been going back to listening to certain key people that have actually uh, transferred or when, let me, wrong word I want you, transition to church. Like Catherine Kuhlman, uh, Smith Wigglesworth, those who literally brought in uh, the future of where we are right now within the church. And so one of my questions have been, what was the key factor that brought them or brought us to this space that we're in right now? And, the, and it was the key factor is their relationship that they had with the Holy Ghost, you see. So because they had a relationship with the Holy Ghost, there are certain things that they had to do in order to prepare themselves to receive the anointing, the power that they had. Now, Catherine Kuhlman made a statement and what she was talking about was all this fake movement of the Holy Ghost. How we think, you know, certain things that we're supposed to do. He said, she, she brought out and she said, the Holy Ghost is pure, all the time pure. And when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you will know it by heart, by your heart and by revelation. You see? By heart and by your revelation. By revelation. Because what's happening is the truth of God is being manifested to you. The truth of God is being manifested to you. You see? Without truth, that means every decision that you make is going to affect you in some way. And literally, it's going to affect you within a negative way, without truth, you see? So when you give someone a lie and they build upon that lie, the foundation that they built on is going to crumble. It's not going to stand because there is, there is nothing to support it once it's been conveyed. So when truth is being manifested, you're supposed to be able to stand on that and make decisions that's going to impact you with a, in a positive way, not a negative way, a positive way. We have so many things that are going on to bring you in a, in a, um, 
a mindset that you shouldn't be in. You know, so they actually pay people to study you, you know, to put before you what they want to want, what they want you to think and how they want you to think. You see, that's how come Romans 12, 2 is so important. It says, be not conformed, but be ye transformed by every what? Renewing your mind. And it says, and to prove, to prove what is good and acceptable, perfect will of God. So when, when you're, when you're reading the word of God, you are standing on or you are looking at or you are expressing truth. See, truth. Now, the truth, Jesus said, the truth will what? Set, set, make you what? Free. So any bondage that you're in is because you lack truth. In that specific area. So if you're sick, if you are financially um, being held back somehow or whatever, whatever the case may be, you are you have not really established truth in that to set you free. Right. Now, <clears throat> don't 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 be don't be don't 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 get past to that crazy look. Okay. Now, truth should should empower you so wherever you decide or however you're deciding to to structure your life there's a certain authority or power you should have right there's a certain authority and power you should have, however you decide to structure your life. And what I mean by that, are you structuring it on the world system or are you structuring it on God's system? I mean, which one are you structuring your life on? You see? Now, if you structure it on God's system, you have an empowerment. You are empowered and you, and you have an empowerment. In other words, you have the authority of power given to you from someone to do something. So in other words, you have the power to change whatever the enemy is trying to bring on you. <clears throat> you do not have to stay in that position that the enemy has been lying to you for about for so many years. Now, listen. Let's turn to James 4. Now, I said I'm talking to you from my heart, you see. Now, with Catherine Kuhlman, every time she stood up, she said she's, she want to talk to you from her heart. She, she don't want to get into the scriptures, but she want to talk to you. But as she talking to you, right, the scriptures manifest in her heart. I just find this to be amazing. See? Because what she is doing is she is allowing herself to yield. She is allowing herself uh, or giving herself an opening that the Holy Ghost can come in and start talking to her to express certain things to y'all that, uh, uh, that y'all need to know by, by God's spirit. You see now James four. I mean, James chapter four. From whence, what, verse 1, from whence comes wars, you see that, and fighting amongst you. You, you see that? Yes. Uh-huh. They come, what, not here, even of your what, lust. You see that? Now, everybody should underline that word. Your lust, your lust, your lust, your lust. And then it says war. You see behind that? War. In your what? Members. Now, I told y'all we are in a new season, right? Now, didn't I say this? We're in a new season, right? And I said there's warring that got to take place while you're in this new season. Are you hearing, you hearing what I'm saying to you? Yes. Okay. Now, this warring, hallelujah, that you're dealing with is your lust that you're having for things. See, the, 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 the lust comes from... You thinking that you don't have the ability to have or get. You have switched positions, listen, to your lust 
instead of in your empowerment. So you're operating on a worldly system which keeps you in a lustful state which keeps you warned against yourself. When you are operating in empowerment, hallelujah, from, the, from God, right, you have no need of lust because whatever you desire is going to come to pass. Amen. Are, are, you, are you hearing what I'm saying? And two, it says you, you lust and you have what? Not. We are constantly in that position for James chapter 4 verse 2. We are constantly in that position of the have nots because we are focusing and our lustful desires has become more powerful than what the word of God is saying. Come on now. Now I'm talking. We're talking about truth, Amen. okay? All right. We 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 bringing truth out here. It is not in any way to condemn anyone, but it's to locate you of where you are. Hallelujah. See, it's just like your GPS. My wife talked about this in the past. You, it's a starting point and there's an ending point, right? Okay. If you don't have the starting point, you can never end, right? right? So we starting here. Okay. Now we have to understand in this new season, right? Our biggest, our biggest thing that we're going to be warned with is our emotions and our function of our desire. Good God. Our function of our desire. So what you mean by your function of desire? How you're going to get it? How, how are you going to get it? Am I going to get it through the ways of man? Or am I going to get it through the ways of God? How am I going to get this? Right? Let's go back to two. It says, you lust, you have not. You kill. And what? Here's that word. And desire. Listen, folks. And the what? Desire to what? To have. And cannot attain. You fight in war, yet you have not. What? Because you what? You what? Ags not. You, you ask not. So now, what's happening here? Oh, boy. That means your mindset is wrong. Your thoughts is wrong. Your thoughts are there. The thoughts with that is creating what I want to say, and y'all heard me say this in the past, an iniquity structure. It's a place where the Holy Ghost cannot work. Could God have mercy? See, Jesus, when the Holy Ghost rested upon him in Matthew 3, Jesus had a house for him. Jesus had a place for him to come and dwell with him. Are you setting a place where the Holy Ghost can come and dwell with you? Or is your desire and your lust so great that you keep in the Holy Ghost at distance? When that happens, the anointing stop. You cannot move and cannot produce anything because the anointing isn't there to help you do. So you're constantly fighting. You're constantly warring. Now let's look at three. You ask and receive not because you ask what? A mist. That you may what? Consume it. You see that? Well, uh, upon who? Your lust. Who lust? Your lust. Your lust. Your lust. Your lust. So now we have to own up to it. Good God. We have to own up to it. Now let me give you an example of that, right? And, and, and let me say this. Owning up to that isn't pretty. Because you're going to find some of the ugliest ways that you can imagine that's going to happen in owning up to this. You know, literally. And then after you own up to it and you receive it, it's going to hurt. And I'll just give you an example. Me and Reverend, we went to the chiropractor. Right? So in the chiropractor, I was in there. I was saying, you know what? I'm going to watch her first. So I said, you go in there first. I'll go in there and I'll watch you first. 
If you come out a certain way, I'm going out the door. You know, this is what I said. The ladies in there started laughing. I, they don't know I was serious. I, I, literally, I was serious. But I guess they call herself, you know, uh, tricking me because she didn't walk out. They called me back before, they, before she walked out. <laughs> so I'm saying, okay. I get in there, could God Almighty. Crack, quick, boom, pull. I mean, all sorts of things is going on. I said, Lord Jesus. I said, ouch. But here's what the woman says. She says, I got to get you realigned. Listen, I got to put y'all in alignment. So I'm going to have to pull, twist, push, shake, move, stretch. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> In order to get you in line. So I equate that to what God is doing with us. He got a pull, shake, twist. You know, and I'm going to tell you, it ain't, but then you're going to see your ugly ways come out. It, it's going to hurt, you know, because what you're doing, you are facing truth about what you are facing truth about an unreality. See, because everything that we see out here will vanish away. Yeah. Uh, okay, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Everything around here will vanish away, but the truth shall stand. Yeah. It shall stand. Yeah. It shall stand. It, 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 it shall stand. The truth shall stand. But see, now as we are Developing our truth by the word of God, not only are we becoming empowerment, but our thoughts will start creating and developing how we see. And oh my gosh. Oh Lord, have mercy. So in other words, your thoughts have something to do with your faith. How you think is how you're going to receive. Right? So your thoughts have something to do with your faith. When we mess with your thoughts, right, we create a perverted faith. Because what, you know, what did the word say? Whatever man soweth, what? So shall he what? Reap. Mm-hmm. So shall, so shall he reap. Now, let's look at four. Four, four. Your adulteress and adulteress. No, you have not the, the what? The, the, the what? Friendship of, of, of the world is what? Enemy of what? With God. Empty with God. You know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. So, whosoever. Therefore, will be a friend of this what? World. world. What? It's a what? Enemy of God. Plain, it can't be no plainer than that, can it? Nope. Now, they say if you continually do the same thing and expect a different result, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. Insane, crazy, however, however you want to put it. You know? And see, whether you realize it or not, when we come to church, we expect the same thing. See, do you realize that's a thought process? Because if you think in the same way, you're going to have the same thing. But if you think in the same way and expecting something different to happen, something wrong with you. Because it's, if you don't change this, Right? The thought, right? Our head can't change. So, now here's the thing. When your thought is going to create what I want to call a motion picture in your mind with your imagination. It's going to create, it's going to have you seeing things. Now, and I need y'all to listen to what Pastor is saying. It's going to have y'all seeing things that's not true. But see, Truth is determined by how you look at it. Come on. Yes. If you're looking at it a certain way, hallelujah, in your eyesight, 
then you need to question that truth. Could God Almighty? Amen. Because you're looking at it and you are analyzing it by three different three different systems. Actually, four. Should we go there? Should, should I take you all there? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Three, th three. James three seventeen. Let, let's look up at, at um, fourteen. Let's let's back let's back up to fourteen. James three fourteen. It says, "But if, but if you have what bitter in envy and strife in your hearts, what you glory what you glory not, and you lie against the what? Good God Almighty, right there." Then let's keep on reading. The wisdom, this wisdom, descendeth not from what? Above. Now, hold it right there. This wisdom, what? Descendeth not from above. Okay? Let's go back again. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, you see that? Yes. Glory not and lie not against the what? Truth. Right? This wisdom descendeth uh, not. Descendeth not from above, but is what? Earthly, sensual, and devilish. You see that? Three. With you, without the truth, these three things are manifesting in you. You see? You need the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, of God to awaken you so you can see the truth that you're operating in. Good Lord have mercy. You are operating in one of these. Without it. So do you understand why God says in this, in, in, in 4.4, at the end it says, a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Because you're operating in a different type of wisdom that cannot be supported by any truth of God. Now, let's go ahead and read down. He says, 16. For where envy and strife is, there is what? Confusion. And what? Every evil work. And he says, but the wisdom that is from above is what? Pure. Remember I said at the beginning of this that the Holy Ghost is pure. Without flaw. But yet, we neglect the very thing to help us to become flawless. Because we have developed, I'm, I still got my finger here, we, 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 we have developed a religious concept. Some people don't even know who the Holy Spirit is. <laughs> 